the Bible says in, uh, in Acts 1, 9 to 11, mm-hmm. after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Hmm. So the question today is, surely this means that Jesus would return on the clouds in the same manner he left earth. Right, so this is a comment that most Christians make to me is that I can't be Jesus because I didn't return on the clouds, uh, just as it says here in the book of Acts. But of course, uh, the book of Acts, the, most Christians also say that it'll be seen throughout the entire world. So there are a lot of physical impossibilities involved <laughs> in the, having these scriptures fulfilled. Firstly, with this particular scripture, it could mean a number of different things. Firstly, he's, they're saying, look, why do you stand here, here looking at him? He will come the same way as he went. Now, if you look at the same way as he went, there was a small group of my followers present just before I ascended into heaven, as the saying goes. Mm-hmm. And only a small group of my followers were present. That's all. No, the world didn't see me go. Um, and, and not all of my followers, in fact, saw me go. Now, if that's the case, then if, if I'm going to return in the same way, then not all of my followers will see me return either. Mm. So, so the meaning of the verse is actually unclear. Um, you see, the... People who followed me after I passed had a lot of feelings that I would return in their lifetime. And they often wrote about their feelings that I would return soon, in some time in their lifetime. But, but I'm going to return how I want to return and how God allows me to return, not in the manner in which people necessarily want me to return. So all of the statements in the Bible, and we've already talked about the Bible, whether it's true or not, and yeah. obviously... Um, I, and I know from my own experience that the Bible is not true anyway. But all of the statements in the Bible, many of them are based around what the disciples at the time wanted to happen rather than what would actually happen about the future. In addition, I said quite clearly to the disciples, in fact, in a few verses above, I said quite clearly that it is not known to you how the Father will act in, in his position of authority. So, in fact, in in Acts chapter 1, verse 7, it says, And he, Jesus, said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. Now, if I've said that in one verse, and then they make a heap of assumptions about another verse, then obviously it's not logical to make the assumptions after they've been told by the very person who said he may return, how or how he may not return. Mm. It was completely dependent upon his own and his Father's choice. Yeah. So I feel that uh, the big problem that most people face with regard to verses like this is they want this particular verse to be true. There is no indication in the verse itself, it's not clearly stated what will actually occur. All it basically says is that I will come in the same manner as I went. And how I went was very few of my disciples even saw me leaving. So under those circumstances, could it be that very few of the people who claim to be my disciples in now on the earth now would actually see my return mm. and recognise it as my return? Could it be that that is meant? Well, of course it could be that that's meant. So we could interpret it a number of ways, couldn't we? That's the we, issue. We could interpret it as, literally <clears throat> as you coming down... From the clouds. From the clouds. Yep. Um, By the way, the spirit world doesn't exist in the clouds. It's in a different <laughs> dimension, so, you know... Yeah. You know, that doesn't even make any sense, really. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we could interpret it as um, only a few... Of the followers would actually, who actually followed me would actually recognise my return. Yep. That certainly has happened. Very few <laughs> of the people who purport to be my followers on earth right at this moment know that Jesus has returned. Yeah. And you, how else could you interpret it? Just that only... People who were true disciples would see you return. Or, yes, and, that, um, and I stated that that was the case in the first century. I stated quite clearly, if, the, if you look at the Bible record, there's even quotations of me stating this in the Bible, that only the people who were born of God, who had been reborn through the new birth process, would recognise 
myself and the teachings that I, that I was given were coming from God. Yeah. So, so most Christians then assume that they all would be those persons, but the reality is they're not mm -hmm. because they have not received the new birth, the majority, and they have not received divine love to the point where they could recognise who Jesus is and what his character is. So the reality even for that is that the majority of Christians today are not capable of recognising Jesus. And many of them, if you look on the forums, on the internet and other things, many of them even realise that, that they, that they wonder whether if Jesus had appeared like oh, I appeared in the first century claiming to be the Messiah, whether they'd even recognise him. And yeah. many of them wonder that. And it's good for them to wonder that because the reality is that Jesus has already arrived and the majority of them haven't recognised it yet. Yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah. sure. So I feel uh, with these uh, issues about my return... Um, also, there is this common concept about my return in the Christian community that I'm going to come destroy the wicked, take the righteous from the earth, and then the world will probably be, the earth itself will probably be destroyed. That's the general underlying viewpoint. Not all of the Christian religions see it that way, but a fair majority do. Now, if I on earth, when I was on earth in the first century, was a pacifist and would not agree to any violence of any kind to any person, whether they were my enemy or my friend. Mm -hmm. And I stated quite categorically in the first century that if a person was violent to anybody, that they're out of harmony with God's love. I also stated quite categorically in the first century that if a person had an enemy, they would to love them rather than to attempt to punish them. Mm -hmm. Then why would I ever return and kill the wicked? Why would I be involved in any genocide whatsoever? It makes no logical sense that I would change my personality in order to suit some of the <coughs> feelings these people have. Yeah. The reality is, in continuance of this question, the reality is I have already returned in the manner in which I have chosen. It just so happens that it's not the manner that the average per person, and particularly the average Christian on earth, wants me to return. That's the issue. The issue is what they want and not what I actually want. Mm -hmm. They want me to come and destroy the wicked. Now, why do they want such a thing? Because they believe all sorts of things about God, that God would destroy the wicked. They believe that I, as God's messenger of truth, would want to destroy the wicked. And none of these things are true. I don't want to destroy anybody. I want to save everyone, not destroy anyone. And in fact, God doesn't want to destroy anyone either. Mm -hmm. God's, all of God's laws are perfect. And so God's laws are already correcting everyone that, and, and will continue to correct everyone. And particularly after they've passed into the spirit world, they will definitely be corrected. God doesn't need to destroy anyone. I don't need to destroy anyone. And I don't want to. And God doesn't want to either. Now, if you as a Christian want me to destroy anyone, you do not yet know love. You do not yet know love. That is the problem. And many of the verses that are quoted to me uh, coming from Christians are coming from their understanding or lack of understanding of love. If they understood love, they would realise that I would never want to be an unloving person. I was not an, uh, an unloving person in the first century, even though the Bible tends to indicate otherwise in certain passages. Mm -hmm. And I am not an unloving person now. And I am never going to do something that is so unloving as to commit genocide like in that, if I was ever going to do those things, I would be comparable to Stalin or Hitler in terms of my soul development. And I am certainly not like any of those people. So, so when you read the Bible and you come to understand all of these things about what the Bible says about my return, understand most of them are coming from a lack of perspective about love, a lack of truth about the knowledge of God and God's laws and, uni and God's universe, and a lack of desire to understand my love for humankind. And uh, in reality, while you hold on to those belief systems, which can never be fulfilled, these verses, some of these verses can never be fulfilled because they purport me to be a person that I am not. They purport me to be a person who wants to destroy, who wants to kill people, who wants to get rid of the unrighteous and so forth. And my feelings are, whether a person is unrighteous or righteous, all I would like to do is present the truth to them and let them make up their own mind, mm -hmm. as God does, let them make up their own mind to decide what they wish to do with the future of their life. That's all I wish to do. And I certainly have no desire whatsoever 
to kill anybody or harm anybody in any way. And, and these verses that indicate that I do are, are verses that are way out of harmony with love. Now, this particular verse doesn't indicate that. It just indicates this idea or concept that I'll come on the clouds and every eye shall see me. Well, uh, something I'd like to say to that is that my, my uh, second coming hasn't finished yet. Mm-hmm. It's possible that in the future that every eye may see me. Maybe not at the same time, though, because it's physically impossible for every person to see an individual at the same time. And, and my feelings are that my second coming hasn't finished. It's mm-hmm. only just begun, uh-huh. in my opinion. And so who knows what might happen in the future. Some of these verses may be fulfilled, but not in the manner in which the people who are currently believing, will, will, you know, as they, as they currently state. As they currently see it. Mm. Sure. Mm. Mm.